Hey guys, uh, so back for a little tutorial this time. Um, I'm just going to show you how to make a simple sampler, uh, and this will come in useful if you do my step sequencer tutorial. Um, but basically, all we're going to do is use the OFX Maximum Library to load a sample um, into the um, the OFX Maxi sample object, and then we're just going to play it back whenever we hit a key. Um, so it's super straightforward and I'll just get stuck right in. Um, one thing to do is to make sure um, that you have a sample to work with. So how do we do this? We open up our project folder um, and, and if we go to bin and then data um, you can see I've got lots of samples loaded up here uh, and I don't worry about getting more than one, we just need one for this um, tutorial but uh, yeah, this is where we store all our samples and this is where we can access them. We could actually access them anywhere in our computer, um, but there's a convenient um, OF to data path uh, method that we can use to easily group our stuff. Anyway, so let's include the header file. Um, and just get my keyboard. So. Uh, and let's include our audio out method. Cool, so we got that defined. Now, what else do we need? Uh, we're going to need, um, as usual, int buffer size and um, sample rate. Um, we're also going to need a value for our current sample. And going to need our double uh, array. So double outputs, two values. Um, okay, cool. So these are the objects we need. Super straightforward. OFX maxi sample, um, and we'll call that sample, and uh, a maxi mix. Cool. And then we can move um, into the main of app. So what do we need to do to set up? We need to uh, set our sample rate. So you guessed it, 44,100 hertz. Um, buffer size equals 512. Um, background goes to black. Um, and we need to switch on the DAC. So we need two outputs, zero inputs. Um, we need a pointer to the base app, and which is this uh, sample rate, buffer size, and um, four numbers of buffers. Um, and here's how we load it. So uh, sample. Then there's a load function, member function, called load. And then we use this useful um, OF2 data path method. And then we just put the name of our sample. So I think I had 4.wav. I think that's a hi hat. Um, cool. So that's, that's then loaded. Um, and we'll look at ways of loading multiple samples when we do the step sequencer tutorial. Um, but for now, we're just doing a single sample. So now um, I need to. Uh, in fact, that's fine. That's fine as it is. Cool. So we don't need um, anything in updates. 
We need to make our audio out method. Glorious. Um, so we need to look through the buffer first. And it's as simple as, uh, there's, there's lots of different methods to play a sample. Um, we can just use um, sample.play, or we could use sample.play uh, with uh, one argument. So we have a, um, an overloaded function, and the first argument is, the only argument is speed. So one would be normal speed, zero would be nothing, or maybe that's just minus. Uh, so that'd be, um, yeah, so zero is probably negative one speed, uh, or at least it's backwards, the right rate, um, and then obviously two would be double speed. Um, anyway, uh, we're not going to use any of those. We're just going to use a sort of one-shot trigger sample um, method, so it's called sample.set, uh, no, sorry, it's not called that, uh, sample.play once. So this 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 function um, returns a double. So we need to assign current sample to equal this, and it will play once. And when it gets to the end, it won't loop. It won't play again. Um, so what we're going to need to do is go down to key pressed, and every time key pressed, we'll set its position using this me uh, method. Set position. To zero. Now, position can be a flip between zero and one. One is at the end of the song, or the, the sample, sorry, and uh, zero is uh, at the beginning. Um, and then, of course, we need to route current sample to um, the mixer, so mix.stereo. Input goes current sample. And um, the output is outputs, and we're mixing that with 0.5. Like so, um, excellent. Uh, so now all we need to do is actually route the outputs buffer. Um, sorry, the outputs array into the right index of our buffer. So uh, outputs um, i times number of channels. Um, and that looks fine to me, so let's find out if I've made any errors. Um, okay, yes, I absolutely meant that. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any more errors? I don't think there are. Okay, cool. So that's looking pretty. Manipulate samples um, and play with them. Uh, you, you are not limited to this play once function and set position. There are more. And I urge you to check out the library and uh, read the header file and have a look at stuff. So you heard it played once on an issue, uh, when it loaded up. Um, and it doesn't, did, it doesn't play again because we haven't tri set the position of the sample back down to zero. However, if I hit space, thrice, then you'll hear uh, the sample being played, so I hit it again, and that's that's super simple, um, so if you wanted it to loop, then that would be as simple as 
just putting um, uh, instead of play once, just just play. I won't I won't try it now because it will take four minutes to load, and frankly, it's not worth the effort. I'm sure you're more than able to do it. But there you go, super easy way to deal with samples uh, in C++. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Take it easy.